Hey, all right. Cool, cool, cool. Gotta love OBS. It just kind of decides to stop using the microphone all of a sudden, and I'm not quite sure why. So that's good stuff. All right. So tonight, um, I've been I've been working on these measurement nodes um, for uh, for a few days now, and I'm I'm happy with where they're going. And um, uh, I'll just mention that they are available. Currently, while they're in development, um, they're available to my Patreon supporters um, who uh, who are on the, the second tier, um, the $3 tier. And uh, so you can, if you sign up there, you can download these nodes that I'm going to be working with tonight. Um, otherwise, if you want to just watch and uh, get inspired to, to do something on your own, that's, that's cool too. Um, I eventually will be making these available in some form or another. Um, if I do make them pay, it's going to be, you know, a couple bucks. It's not going to be any big deal. Um, so anyway, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, OBS is, is, is something special. Um, but it works most of the time. So, um, so anyhow, so what I want to do is I'm going to whip up a quick, model of something super simple and then um throw on some of my measurement nodes uh to give you kind of an idea of the workflow that I'm I'm kind of going towards and then um kind of like you saw on the thumbnail um how to then take that and uh turn it into a render that looks like a kind of a technical drawing um from there so um Without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, just going to make some kind of, I don't know, simple uh, brackety sort of thing. I uh, probably want to turn on this. Okay, you should be able to see my input history now. So I'm just going to just extrude some kind of shape like we got some kind of um, some kind of deal going on here. Uh, let's yeah, OK, now we'll punch a few holes through it. And I'm using the uh, bool tool add on that comes with blender. Um, so uh, selecting multiple, multiple objects, and then the final object, control shift minus, just does an automatic, um, automatic boolean, if you're not familiar with that. Um, all right, let's see here. So we got some circles, we got some angles, we got some edges. Um... I don't know. Let's uh Sure, let's do this. That subdivide twice and then we will do Hey, hey, 
good to see you on uh on the stream tonight here okay I don't know. We've got some kind of random part or bracket going on here. Um, good enough for now. Okay, so here's the kind of the thought process that I'm going through. Uh, I'm going to tip this up this way just to get the get some points of interest up here on the front view. Bring up my geometry nodes. Okay. So when I originally started um, doing these, my idea was that you would just add uh, geometry nodes to the object you want to measure. Um, that seemed logical. But as I got to doing that, it, it really seemed like... Um, It caused problems when you just wanted to render just your object and not your measurements. Uh, you'd have to turn on and off each one of those nodes or each one of those modifiers, and uh, it just it wasn't great. So I'm going with a little different strategy. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object that's going to be my container for my measurements and. Um, I'm just going to create a plane, rename it um, measurements, and then I'm going to delete all the vertices of that plane. So it's just an empty mesh object now um, that I can that I can access up here, and I'm going to store all of my measurements in that um, in that object. So that's the object that I'll add the node tree to. Now I am in Blender 3.4 stable. Um, I'm doing all this in 3.4 stable. Uh, some of the new um, asset, like uh, adding a node, like adding an asset node through these menus um, has been a little crashy for me. Um, I'm not, I haven't nailed it down just quite yet. What's up with that? So uh, I'm going to avoid using that tonight um, just to one less crash option. Uh, speaking of which, let's go ahead and um, save this. Okay. Um, so I'm going to open up an asset browser window to access my measurement nodes. Um, eventually, you would just add them through that as the blur node working as far as I know, the blue blur, blur node is working. I actually haven't tried it yet. Um, I've been kind of head down in these measurement nodes and, uh, I know, um, uh, the dev who was working on that. Um, he's a newer, uh, a newer dev to the community team and he's been working on it for quite some time. Um, and, uh, and I know this, but there's a lot of work gone into that node and I think it's I think it's getting there, um, but it is not in 3.4 stable. Um, that is in 3.5 alpha. So you'd have to download a daily build of 3.5 alpha to get that feature. Um, all right, so I've got my measurement container here, and I'm gonna go to my uh, go to my asset packs. <laughs> no problem. I'm really easy to sidetrack, um, and uh, so yeah. Uh, Anyway, uh, so I've got my, my asset library here. Um, and then under nodes, I've got my uh, measurement nodes. So to start with, I want to go ahead and measure these uh, measure these circles. So I'm going to use, um, let's, let's make this large so we can see the titles. I'm going to use the measure circle modifier. Um, and the way I've put these together, 
Um, I'm trying to make this so that it's it's easy for people who are not who are a little nervous about geometry nodes and who don't want to dig into it too much and for people who love geometry nodes. So you can um, add one, one measurement per node tree. So if I were to go here and then instead of creating a node tree with all my measurements in it, I could just pick like if I uh, first I got to drag this in here and then um, so now it's it's in my scene now I've imported it so now I can uh, come here but I could do this and then I could add this modifier to get this measurement then I could just add another no node tree with another measurement and then another one so I could have a whole stack of geometry node tree modifiers each one with its own measurement and then you could name them appropriately um, that that will work. Um, thinking about plugins um, or not plugins, add-ons that would be able to add those automatically. So you could like click on a couple of empties and then say add a circle um, measurement, and it would just do that automatically. Slap in a geometry modifier or a ge geonode modifier and put that particular um, node or that node tree in there uh, and name it appropriately. Um, that that's down the road a little bit. So for now, I'm not going to do it that way. Um, so we'll just create a node tree on our measurements object, not on my bracket here. And I'll drag in a measure circle modifier. I do have some organization on these nodes still to do, um, like the order of, of uh, options and such. Um, uh, my curve length is reducing. Yeah, I, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, in the long run, we'll see if this is a, gr a good approach or not. Um, so far, it's working out all right. Check out this workflow. And, uh, and see what you think. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a couple of empties. Um, viewport camera, you can get the position of, I don't know. Um, that would be kind of cool. Um, I think if you were to, the closest thing you could do to that is if you, uh, here under view, you can do, um, you can lock the camera to the view. And then while you do that, um, and you navigate around, it's actually moving your camera with, um, with your scene. So you can just navigate as normal and it moves your camera. So I think that's the closest you could get to that. Um, That, that's what I would do uh, if you were wanting to do that kind of thing. Uh, okay. Back to where I was here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, a couple of empties on these, uh, on one of these holes here. So... First, I want to select the vertices in this ring, and then I'll do a Shift S and say a cursor to selected. That's going to put the cursor uh, smack dab in the middle of that ring of vertices. Then I'll tab out of edit mode and add an empty. shrink it down here because the size doesn't matter. Um, okay, so that's there. And then this next one, I'm just going to grab uh, one of these vertices here, do the same thing, say cursor to selected, and then add another empty. 
hide my camera there, get that out of the way. So now I've got these two empties. I'll go back to my measurements. And now for the circle one, I'm, I first I pick a center point, and then I pick this one here. Let me spread this out so you can see the names. Uh, this one is on circumference. Um, so I pick this empty here. Next, next thing we want to do, oh, I hid the camera, so I'm not going to be able to select it. There we go. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit. I have this option for camera. Um, currently there isn't, and I'm, I'm going to talk to the devs about this, um, or, or maybe look at coding this up myself. Um, have a geometry node that can give you access to the object that is the current camera. Like no matter what your active camera is, it could provide that for you. Um, and then I wouldn't need to have this in each one of these nodes, but for now I do. So I have to say what my current camera is camera, not empty. And you'll notice as soon as I do that, the text um, lines up with the camera. And no matter where I put my camera now, this text will be flat um, facing the camera and rotated to see the camera um, flat. So that's really handy. That's kind of the, one of the first things um, that was necessary here. Uh, some of the options, of course, is, you know, I can make this dimension line longer. Um, I can change the size of the opposing uh, arrow here. Um, text size, how, how far the text is offset, how many decimal places the uh, text has. Um, then I can do a material. Let's uh, go here and I'm going to go up here. New material, I'll go to shading real quick. And, and here's a trick if you need a shadeless material. Um, so like overlay text, you probably want, um, which you can connect the camera to the input. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can, I can do that. I just want it automated. Like, cause I'm always going to want it to face the camera or the active camera. And so it would be great if I could just plug in like active camera, not, not just camera object. That way, if I have more than one camera, if I do an automated switching between cameras, it would, that, that stuff would face the active camera. Um, it's just me being persnickety. Uh, oh, okay, so if you need a shadeless material, that's uh, not going to have any kind of um, anything on it. You can always just do this, plug your, um, plug a color, you know, straight into the surface. And uh, we'll go with pure black. Okay. Back to geo nodes. Now that I have a material, um, I can set the text material. I can set the line material, and I can set those separately if I want. Um, but uh, you know, that's of course up to you. Um, you know, if you wanted your lines red and your text black and whatever, uh, then. The text unit, um, uh, why is that? Oh, yeah, 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 sorry. Heck, chaff. This is again where I need to reorder these. Um, so I can change the, the unit of the measurements here. Um, I'm sure I could get it with a script, but I'd I'd rather not need a script to do that. Um, uh, so here, this text unit is the order of magnitude for the metric system. 
So if I drop this down, I get decimeters, centimeters, millimeters, uh, micrometers, etc. Um, or I can go the other direction and get uh, decameters, hectometers, kilometers. Um, of course, if I go kilometers, I'm going to need more decimal places. So we'll just go back to And we'll go to centimeters, sure. And less decimal places. Okay. Um, of course, I can flip the text around. So like if this, uh, if you moved this empty over here to this side of the circle, of course, I'm not snapping it to the, um, vertices here, but you know, you could, you could do some snapping. Um, so that text can flip around to the other side if you need it. Um, you can turn on and off that opposing arrow. Um, I've noticed in some, I've been looking up information about dimension lines. Some of them show the opposing arrows for diameters. Some of them don't, um, no, just calculate volume. I haven't done any volume yet. Um, I've done area. Um, I've got an area one, uh, but I have not done volume yet. Uh, uh, line thickness and, um, oh, and I can also change this to radius and this will give me um, just half the, half the distance here instead. Um, so you might do radius and turn off the opposing arrow. Um, so, so there's that. And of course, um, you know, you could come in here and, uh, you know, if you were like, well, I need to move these vertices around or something like that, uh, later you could do, um, vertex parenting. Uh, you could parent the, the empties to a, a vertex and then they would just move with the vertex. Um, you you do that just by uh, come back. There we go. Selecting your vertex, shift selecting your object, and then doing uh, vertex parent vertex. None of is uh, oh, here we go. There we go. I did it in the wrong order. Um, so now if I were to grab these, that's gonna move, um, move those empties. And of course I would, I would also want to do a vertex parent of between this and, um, my other other vertices as well, or I could drop a single vertice. Um, you know, I could take these and uh, you know create one, duplicate one vertice, put it right in the middle, and then vertex parent to that. If I really felt the need to do something of that nature. Um, okay, so that is the circle measurement. Now let's um, now let's look at another another measurement. So I'll bring up my measurements again, and this time let's do uh, measurement angle. Um, oh, I've got some wayward linked, uh, empties from another file. I got to get rid of those. Um, so this one, uh, very simply requires, uh, three points. Can I stream at 1080p or no? Um... Uh, give me a second.
I right now I cannot my internet connection isn't wonderful unfortunately um so I I'm for live streaming I'm kind of topped out at the moment um I apologize uh, I'll try to zoom in a bit more um okay yeah I'll try to I'll try to zoom in a little bit and um okay so for the All right, for circle measurement or for angle measurements, I will need a a point like an empty on the kind of the center point. I'll need one along one edge of the angle and then one along the other edge. And of course, you would want to make these um, a little more accurate, obviously. Um, but for our purposes this evening, they can be a little less than accurate and that's fine. So in my measurements, I'll grab the pivot point, one of these extensions and the other extension and choose my camera. And now I can start making some adjustments here. Um, let's see, extension line length. I only want those to go maybe to here. Um, my... Let me change that. There we go. That's the one I want. Bring that down, make it smaller. Um, and then I can add my... Oh, well, and here um, I've... I'm, I'm dumb. Um, okay, let me back up just a hair. And I'm going to... I'm going to put my camera and I'm going to, thanks Jay. I really appreciate that. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad, glad you stopped by. That's, uh, that's super nice of you. Um, I'm going to put my camera in orthographic mode. And then I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going, oops mess it all up. There we go. Maybe turn it this way. I'm going to go grab these three empties that I made. This one, this one, and come on. I know you want to come with me. There we go. Grab those and bring them over here. And get them lined up. Um, there we go. Drop that in that way, and uh, you know we start getting start getting some stuff that is actually starting to look like measurements. So now I can come in here, put in my line material and my text material, and um, you know reduce my 
decimals here. Um, you can change this. Uh, these extension trims, um, if for some reason you wanted to like only have this one be like that, you can you can make that kind of uh, that kind of adjustment. And I'm um, trying to think if there's anything else special on this one. Um, extension line length, length uh, offset from extent. Oh yeah, then if you want to put a little gap, you can control this one, and you can control this one. Yeah, so that's. Um, that is the angle. All right. So let's look at something else here. I'm going to grab this one and duplicate it again, turn it this way. Orthographic, got to change it here. All right. Now, um, of course, the the real obvious one that you need are edges. So I've got a couple of different methods for doing distances. Um, yeah, so I'm, I want to get them to a little bit more of a stable point, go through, try to get the UI cleaned up. There's a few like naming conventions that I got to nail down. Um, the order of the inputs of the sockets, I want to get those all lined up so that they're consistent from node to node to node, but kind of as I'm developing them, that's, eh, it's not great. So um, once I'm to a point where I'm ready to say, hey, this is for sale, um, then I will do that. Um, but like I had uh, mentioned earlier, and I'll mention it again now, um, if you are uh, if you are a Patreon supporter um, on the the three dollar level or higher um, on my Patreon, I am posting these as I make changes to them, so you can kind of get get this in development. And it's going to be you know it's going to have little bugs and it's going to have idiosyncrasies as I work through them. Um, and there's no guarantee that they're going to stay exactly the same you know, from now until the time that they're done. But as a Patreon supporter, you would get, um, you would get to try each, each version as I publish them. So if you're, if you're interested and you want to check them out, that's one way you can check them out, uh, before they hit, hit the big time. Um, okay. So distance, the, um, the first one, uh, that I'll show you is, uh, where is it? Okay, I've got the measure edge modifier. And so now what? Um, uh, the Patreon link should be in the description. Um, is it? Is it? Can somebody confirm or deny uh, if my... Um, my Patreon link is uh, in the description. So you can tell me. I um, okay, cool. Um, all right. So edge measurements. This one's kind of fun. So uh, this one, I say, I pick my target object. So. I will pick this this one here. And now I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go into edit mode on this object and I want to measure this top edge. This one right here. So I will open um, overlays and turn on indices. And uh, I've got a terrible just horrible font color. 
Ah, there we go. 188 is the edge number here. So if I come in here and put in 188, I'm going to get this uh, started and we want, um, we'll start here. Now, initially this, um, the angle around this is a little, uh, it's a little tricky um, because I'm trying to come up with an arbitrary angle off of just a single vector. Um, and there's an infinite number of uh, perpendicular vectors to that vector. So this is kind of arbitrary, the, the angle it comes out at. But um, what I can do is do this rotation around edge and just line it up like this. Okay. Then I'll come in, I'll pick my materials, hook up my camera, um, show units, decimals, Okay, so I can control how far off the uh, how far off the edge this is. I already did the rotation around the edge. The offset from the origin um, is how far the extension lines uh, are separated from the uh, from that line from that edge. Um, then I can control how close the dimension lines are to the actual measurement. To make that, uh, I change the thickness of the line. Uh, text size, just like the others. Uh, text rotation, if I wanted to, you know, do this kind of number, um, I could do that. Nope. You camera, thank you. Okay. Um, then uh, this extension line factor. Um, I didn't have a better name for it, but this will let you then say, I want more than 100% of that distance that I chose. So you can get this kind of style here, um, which is very, you know, obviously very common um, in, uh, in these sorts of things. And then point one and point two bottom extension, this lets you uh, go uh, down further if for some reason um, uh, you needed to do that uh, and like one side was lower than the other um, you could you could do that kind of thing and make those make those longer um, now of course this is all fine and dandy except when your measurement gets really small like that, it no longer looks good. So because of that, I have this dimension inside checkbox and I can now put the dimension um, outside. I can move this text over and I can choose which side I want it on. So now I've got, you know, for when you do have a small measurement like that, you can get those kind of dimension lines instead, as that is extremely common. Okay, so that is the edge. And so that just works just off of, um, just off the edge index. Now, if I come in here, um, I'll show you, uh, Let's see, okay, that's 333. Um, so I'm gonna grab this and go to index 333. You will notice that these go perpendicular around the edge. They don't line up, they don't necessarily line up horizontal vertical with the viewport. I'm still working on that. I've got some issues that I'm trying to resolve 
uh, to make that work right so that you can just lock them horizontal and vertical. Um, but, you know, that's... Uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, okay. So that's one way we can do a standard dimension line like that. Um, another one is uh, with two locations. Everything here works the same, except instead of um, picking an object and an edge, you're just giving it a start location and an end location. So you could use, um, you could do like a sample, sample index position. Um, overshoot. Yeah, I like that. Over, uh, good. Uh, that's a good suggestion. I like that. Uh, I like that terminology. Um, thank you. Uh, so, so here you, like I said, you could do a, um, like a sample, sample index and then choose the position of a particular vertice or face or edge of, of one object. And then the, uh, some other element of another object and be your other location. So this one, the locations are arbitrary. Um, but since I didn't want people to have to bring in a couple of object info nodes just to connect this to a couple of empties like we've been doing with some of the other ones, um, I do have a, a measure two objects uh, distance modifier here. And this one... It's the same thing, except now I can just pick two objects, like two empties, and get the same kind of line, and I get all the same, the same sorts of options. Um, and uh, and actually, as a a little GeoNode uh, development, I don't know, idea. Um, all three of these actually you, well. These two, if I go into them, you'll see that it actually uses the measure two locations um, node internally. So really, I've only implemented this mess um, once for those. For those, I did have them a couple of different times, and it was becoming a nightmare to um, to maintain the different nodes. So. Being able to just put one node, one big node inside this, and then expose and make the adjustments that I needed to make on the inside um, was handy. All right, uh, let's see what else we have. Um, oh, okay, uh, another necessary thing. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, it's it's ugly. Um, it's some um, noodle soup is uh, is kind. Um, looks like the Christmas lights I just took out of the garage. Uh, <laughs> um, so one of the things I noticed that was really needful was some uh, some like dimension line, other dimension lines. So if I uh, let me turn off indices here. Cool. All right back to here. All right, I'm going to go cursor to selected and then add an empty. Okay, there we go. Now, um, you might want to have a, like a dotted line as for like internal extensions. You've probably seen something like, uh, like this right here. Um, so that you don't have to run dimension lines down through your model, like solid ones. You can do dashed ones on the inside and then solid on the outside. So to that end, I have the measurement line, uh, 
modifier here. And I'll say point one is this empty and point two is this empty. I can then extend them separately. So if you want one side to stick out, but not the other, you can do that. Um, I can uh, increase the that resolution for uh, I think that might be legacy okay um, this length changes the size of the dashes um, so you can have those there uh, let's see increase my oop that's some thick lines too big too big escape um, This, uh, these dash patterns, this is just an idea I've had. Um, I don't know if it's, I'm going to stick with it or not, but, um, this lets you, uh, basically it's what, like all of the, all of the dashes, it says, okay, I'm going to delete. It's two, it's two mod moduluses, if you will. So these are both deleting every third uh, like spot on or every third point on this uh, curve. So I could do every third and every fifth and I would get, you know, a dash pattern like this. Um, and here I'm saying uh, do the, the every third um, or every fifth or um, only when it's the third and the fifth, delete it. Uh, and so you can get some um, other types of, other types of dashed lines here. Um, I'm probably gonna pare that down a bit. It's a little over complicated um, than people probably want, but some level of uh, ability to differentiate some of your dashed lines uh, might, might be nice. Um, so anyway, that is the, uh, that's the measurement lines. Let's see how this is looking. Um, uh, over here and then over this and and turn off transparent probably will need to make the lines thicker but that's fine for now um okay uh, next, we have uh, ca uh, text callouts. So, for the text callouts, you can give it some text. Give it a location where you want the, um, the text to show up and then you give it an anchor maybe put it right here our camera material material and let's bump up this line thickness to say eight um, Okay, so once we have a, um, once we have our text call out, we can, we can adjust um, how far this line goes between the bend and the text. Uh, we can change this, uh, how long this bend line is. 
we can give it a uh, we can give it a um we can round the bend um instead of having it be sharp and you've got control over that resolution and how big the bend radius is Uh, line thickness, of course. Um, here is uh, trimming from the end of the line and the beginning of the line. Um, that's really great uh, if you want to use this in an animation. Um, here, give me two seconds. Um, I did. So I did this video here. Where I tracked this footage and um, and then tied the uh, I tied the empties in the scene that were where my text call out was connected. I tied those to um, the empties that were created by um, by my video track. And so that way my text, the text end of my call out stayed, stayed where it was. And then the other end tracked with the video. And then I could do a kind of a little animation of the, of the call out line coming in and out. Um, and that literally took, I mean, the, the hardest part was the tracking. Um, after I did the tracking, pretty much it took a couple of minutes and I was, was done, um, after adding in the, um, adding in the call out. So, so that was kind of, that was kind of cool. Um, so line thickness, uh, again here you can, yeah, this looks funny that way, but, uh, you can change the side the text is on, um, way you have control that way uh, text rotation you can do that um, you've got uh, character spacing you've got word spacing you got line spacing if you have multiple lines and then um, one of the things that was interesting uh, let's see here. Give me one moment. Let me grab some uh, text to use here. Okay. So say our call out is something a bit more um, extensive. Ah, sorry. Okay. So obviously... Um, that is uh, way, 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 way too long to um, to work there. So we can actually use the text box width. And now uh, we do line spacing. And so now we've got a nice, um, a nice way to do, uh, to do a, a larger block of text in a call out if we need to. Um, uh, we can do that. So then, if uh, if we want, we can add an arrowhead at the bottom, and we can adjust the size of that if we need to. Um, we can then also change this to a dashed line if we want and adjust the dash size. I did not. Oh, oh, then the, that the dash pattern like 
um, for. Um, yeah. Let's see here. So that is the uh, the text callout. Um, one thing I will probably add to this is a way then to um, adjust the text. Uh, I guess I already did it. Text. No. Um, ad adjust the text so like you could have the text sitting on top of this callout line. Um, well, the text coming in, I could, I think, um, uh, El Banco, I think something that could be done is instead of this being, instead of having, um, that be a text call out um actually have like a uh like an object call out or a geometry call out so then you could it would generate the line it would do all of this stuff for you except um but then you could provide your own geometry to to stick at the end of the line so you could format some text any way you wanted um, the problem with what you're asking is, let me go into this node um, so you can see uh, what I am uh, what I am thinking about and dealing with. So the the um, the justification settings here, you can't control them with a socket. And so for every change to a justification setting, I need to have another um, branch in this tree. So just to switch the text from right justified to left justified, um, like I had to split it. So I'd have to split it a bunch of different, like a bunch more ways. That being said, I know there is there's work being done behind the scenes, and it's kind of a slow process. But there is work being done towards making drop-down boxes accessible via a socket. So I don't know if they'll do like an integer or something like that. So like choose the first option, second option, third option, but you would be able to change drop-down box values with an input, which would be killer. Um, then you could totally do exactly what you're asking. But that being said, I think a geometry callout where you could just provide your own geometry might might be an interesting uh, might be an interesting idea. I'll have to uh, I'll have to put some thought into that. So there's that callout. Um, all right, so we've done that, we've done those, we've done those. Um, oh, uh, okay, so here's the face area. Um, the face area is a lot like the... Um, face area is a lot like the measure edge. So we... Uh, Now say we want to measure this face here. Giant, giant arrow. Let's get rid of that. Um, okay, so if I come into this object, go into face mode and go into indices, that's face 23. Face index 23. Then I'll add an empty over here. Do 
choose my materials, choose my camera. And uh, oh, this one I've got to I've got to still add add here. Um, this one still requires you do this. And I will add uh, show the units. So there we've got. 1.82 meters squared. And, um, you know, so as you cycle through the faces, uh, it'll... Oh, maybe I need to... Oh. This one still needs a little work. I've I've been reworking. Oh no, it's it's right up here. There we go. There we go. Yeah, those are all the interior faces of those uh, hole cutouts. And um, so, yeah, this has the same thing with the decimals and the, the unit magnitude, um, all the uh, the call out stuff here. Um, nothing else really too special um, on that one once you get to that point. Okay. Um, last... Yeah, last one here is, this one really is, this was an initial idea I had, it just doesn't really match up with an actual real world thing um, now that I've gotten a little further in, but um, I'll show it to you anyway. Uh, this is another um, corner, or another angle one so I'll grab this modifier here or this uh my new camera There we go. So it puts a little arc in a corner, does a call out, and then does the angle of that face corner. Um, and so you just give it the face corner index you want to point to. Again, like I said, that that uh, kind of notation is not exactly standard. So um, I I don't know if this particular node will end up being in the final product or not. Uh, we'll see. All right. So now that we've done all of this. Um, Let's go ahead and try to get a somewhat decent render out of this. Um, I'm going to uh, connect up my line thickness here. So I can get them all 
similar. Mm -hmm. And let's see how that looks. Okay, that's not looking too shabby. I'm just missing. Uh, this one. Material here. Okay. All right. So once we, we get this to this point, We've basically got two objects go or well, two types of objects going on. We have our our actual actual models, and then we've got this object that has all the measurements on it. So my next thought was, well, if we add a um, let's go ahead and take these three and move them to their own collection, and then in that collection or uh, no, in the scene collection, we will add a collection line art. And the line art will, the collection will choose is collection two. So I render this and the only problem I really ended up with was that places where my call outlines overlap the models, um, I get these lines. Um, and when it overlaps itself, I do want those lines. But when it overlaps these, I don't want those lines. So what I actually ended up doing was... Um, so if I take my measurements and I move them to their own collection, and then if I create a, another view layer, and so now uh, I'll put this line art up here. So view layer one will just be my um, uh, let's see. yeah, will just be my measurements. View layer will not contain my measurements. And render that. Okay, so here's view layer, here's view layer one. So now my measurements don't interact at all with my models as far as the uh, line art modifier goes. So we'll come back in here, um, turn down this thickness on the line art modifier. Then I'm going to um, uh, turn on transparent. Come over to compositing. Give this another render. My samples are way too high for what we're doing here. Um, use nodes.
tired of waiting for that to render. And there's that. Um, of course, if we wanted to get uh, lines in here representing these holes, we could come into our um, into our line art modifier and go into occlusion and um, do a range here. think yeah there we go um, and of course uh, you could split that up and do some separate um, line styles and so the occluded lines could have like a dashed style um, whereas the uh, non occluded lines could have solid you know there's all sorts of stuff you can do there to make it more and more like a um, an actual tech drawing. Um, but overall, I think once, um, you know, once you start putting these all together, uh, and, and, you know, kind of once you know how they all work, stringing together, uh, you know, eight or 10 of these things could go pretty quickly. Um, and you could set up a, you know, you could set up a, a measurement setup like this uh, pretty easily. Um, I would then think you could do another scene um, and do a perspective render in that scene and then composite that in here. Um, you know, why not? Let's let's go ahead and do that for um, for no good reason. Uh, all right, we'll do a um, we'll do a full copy. All right, we're in the scene now. Here, uh, we'll drop all this stuff over over here. We will change back to perspective. Let me grab this puppy here. And we'll do one of these numbers. Why not? Um, oh, <laughs> I still have my other. Uh, uh, there, we're just going to get rid of that, get rid of you. Yes, to here we can get rid of that. And on this one, we will get rid of the occluded lines. So now if I go back to my first scene, go back to my compositor, grab scene one, Let's 
too far. Right there. Okay. Now, if I take this and I just do a little uh, distort. that then we will do a translate And there we go. So now we've got our three uh, three orthographic views and a perspective view, all composited into one render with our measurements and um, a copy of lorem ipsum. So, uh, yeah. So these are the these are the measurement nodes. Um, one last time, uh, they aren't available to purchase yet, but if you would like, um, if you would like to download the, uh, kind of the work in progress files as I'm developing them, um, they are available and I'm posting them every, every other day or so, um, that I make progress on it. Uh, I'm posting updates, uh, to my Patreon. The link is down in the description. Um, I'd love to have you sign up. You also, when you subscribe to my Patreon, if I do any, um, uh, if I do any videos, uh, I, I make sure to, um, since I started it, I've been saving any of the project files that I make during a video. And then I post those there for my, um, for my supporters. So you can, uh, dig through the files that I used to make the videos, um, so you can, you can check those out as well. Um, and, uh, I'm not sure what other exclusive content I'll have for my, uh, patrons just yet, but, um, I'm looking at ways that I can make that, uh, worth your $3 a month. Uh, if you decide to support, uh, the channel that way, um, visit my Gumroad page. Uh, I, it's, um, Johnny Gizmo dot gumroad dot com. Um, I've got a ton of free assets there. They're all pay what you want. So if you want to go and pick up some uh, asset libraries um, for free, you can do that. If you find them useful and you want to come back and throw me a couple of bucks, I appreciate it. Um, but that's up to you and how much they're worth to you. So you can go and check those out there. Uh, if you'd seen my uh, stuff on my hair, on the hair nodes, um, those are posted there. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of asset libraries like um, tables and shelves and um, uh, candles and uh, planters and bottles and like all sorts of things like that. Um, and some other node generators like uh, some flooring generators. I've got a staircase generator there that some people have found interesting. Um, I've got a library of uh, photo frames that you can, that are all assets that you can just drag in and drop on your walls to do some set decorating uh, really quickly. Um, I've got a library of uh, curve profiles like, um, like crown molding and like baseboard and things like that. Like literally, I think there's like 187 different. Uh, it's over a hundred. It's a, it, it's a lot. It, <laughs> it took a while. Um, but they're all curve profiles. You can drag them in and then use them either in geometry nodes or, uh, as, um, bevel profiles in just a curve object, uh, if you want. Um, so those are really nice to add some, detail and variation to your scenes as well. 
so you can check out um, you can check out my Gumroad, and uh, um, it's probably not in the description of this video, but if you go into the description of any of my other videos, you will find links there. Um, if you're in the market for a, uh, a display tablet, um, like uh, this sort of deal here. Um, XP pen. I've been using an XP pen for a couple of years. I, I purchased one uh, almost two years ago and it's been working great for me. And they are uh, coming on as a sponsor of the channel. Um, so you'll be, you'll be hearing about them over, over the next uh, bit here. Um, but I reached out to them to see if, uh, to see if they'd be interested in uh, in partnering, and and they were, and so I was really grateful for that. Um, so, also in in the links in the descriptions of any of my other videos, um, and then probably in this one once I'm done filming it, uh, will be links to um, some affiliate links on Amazon. If you are in the market this holiday season for a tablet display, XP Pen is really affordable, and um, you know, if you've looked at some of the uh, uh, some of the other bigger name tablets, you know they've got a really hefty price tag. But for just a couple hundred dollars, you can get yourself into a decent um, a decent tablet. And cool thing with the artist, uh, this is the this one's the artist um, uh, thirteen three pro. And I've got and um, XP Pen upgraded me to the fifteen six. Um, the experimental feature in the development versions of Blender, they shut it off in the releases because it's not ready for prime time yet, but the pen tilt option for sculpting works with these two tablets. So I've tested it on both of these and it does work. So if you're doing sculpting and you have your pen at an angle and like say you're on clay strips, it'll actually, um, it'll add the clay strip at that angle rather than just straight up and down, which is kind of cool. Um, and you can, you know, change a bunch of different settings to, uh, to be controlled by the tilt. Um, so anyhow, thanks again to XP pen for, uh, their support of the channel. So anyway, I think um, that might be it for this evening. Uh, I've been talking for way too long now. Um, I hope you all are having a uh, having a nice uh, holiday season, no matter uh, what holiday uh, you celebrate. I hope that it is um, a joyful time for you to spend with with friends and family and um, that you just get a chance to, to relax this holiday season and um, uh, spread some, spread some kindness to one another. Um, there's enough cruddy stuff going on in this world and people being awful that uh, it's worth it for you, uh, for you to go out and to spread some kindness. So thanks again for watching. Um, for those of you who kind of stuck through, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you, uh, so much. And, you know, I've definitely got some, uh, definitely got some folks who, uh, have been big supporters of the channel for a long time now. Um, and it, it really, uh, it really speaks a lot to me that, uh, that you keep coming back and, uh, watching my streams, checking out my content, um, posting comments, um, supporting me on my gum road, supporting me on my Patreon. It means a lot to me. Um, I really appreciate it. So with all that said, I am going to bid you all a good night and, uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can do some more live streams again here in the not too distant future. Um, uh, if you, um, Uh, if you have ideas, if you have things that you're like, I really wish he would cover this topic or that topic. Um, I do give, uh, I do give my Patreon supporters, um, of either, either tier, um, kind of first, first,
first dibs at uh, shooting me suggestions um, uh, for uh, for videos. So um, so if you want to support that way, uh, you can feel free. Anyhow, all this to say, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.